I guess we should be talking about Mahout, though, or Mahout, whatever you want to call it. However you want to talk about it. works great once you get Spark working. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It it's so easy to do uh, native installs. Spark is super easy that way, mm -hmm. uh, my experience anyway. But well, it was I, you know, before Kubernetes was a thing. Uh, yeah, well, everything was. <laughs> well, and that's a joke. Except not, it's not, like, it's Istio and, like, all the, all the cloud native foundation like cloud native computing foundation so that was all post kubernetes yeah we're the new java how'd you talk about that good it was good i think we probably lost everybody but uh not as bad as you guys good lord you gotta be a data scientist or something <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> who me oh wait i don't know what you're talking about Oh, that was very nice. Both of you guys had a great talk. I, I like the, uh, I, I didn't know we had so many R operators or MATLAB operators. I'd never even gone through a, a survey of all that. Yeah. I don't, I don't use that much of it. Um, I use, right. you know, the part I use is pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> yeah, everybody uses their tiny little part. That's, that's the nice thing about getting together. Is somebody leading this, or should we just sit here and uh, talk about old times? Eh, we can do both. That was kind of the whole point. Um, Trevor's kind of the only new new guy here, and, and he's not even that new. Years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but Andrew and I go back to what long 12, 2012 or something? Yeah, oh the oh nine release. Right, uh, Sunil. Yeah. And the 09 release, yeah, that was the first Spark release. <laughs> uh, and Sunil's great folly, as he likes to tell the story. What? Have you ever heard him tell that story? Oh, I gotta hear a story. We all record it. great folly. I don't, it's, it's it, it, the punchline of it ends up being why all the major Hadoop releases, oh. version pin, Madoop, Mahoot, like 09, with like a couple bug patches on it, mm -hmm. but then never like upgraded, updated past that. He like did some dirty back end deal to get him to like add the patches in. And then since they were all basically like trying to maintain parity with each other, none of them ever went to 10. So they all just left it at 09.01 or whatever, 03 or whatever it was. At any rate, he makes himself sound like it's a lot more important. He's a lot more important than he was. Uh, we are recording. Uh, recording. Yeah. yeah. No, no he, he's very important. He, he was a major uh, yeah. player back then. On, on that particular thing, you got to hear the story from him. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think he, his, his role in that one, one part, I think he self aggrandizes a bit. We're okay. recording, so he's going to see yeah. it anyway. So this is me back. That, that was a, <laughs> that was really a, a pivotal part of the project. You missed that, Trevor, yeah. but I mean, it was yeah. all based on Hadoop and MapReduce, and uh, it became obvious that that was not the future, that Hadoop yeah. MapReduce was, you know, going to sort of, decay, uh, if you will. And I remember uh, Sebastian uh, Skelter, who was one of the prime movers that back then, uh, made an announcement on the, after we had all discussed it, I guess, I don't know if I was a committer yet, but a uh, contributor, um, he made the announcement that no more commits would be accepted for MapReduce. Mm -hmm. Remember that, Andrew? Fair enough, yeah. And I, you know, the 09 was based on on that. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna reverse that actually. If anybody wants to come in and put bug patches on <laughs> old MapReduce code, cool. That's well, yeah, I, that's I, I think that's what he he, he said was yeah. Uh, if you want to do bug fixes or you know yeah. minor, uh, yeah. but no new features would be. Yeah, uh, I think the, the cutoff was no new algorithms. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but who needs algorithms if you got math? That's right. Does any algorithm? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You know, and that's a part I, I appreciated about. Um, gosh, I can't remember. I just watched both of your talks. But the point that that um, 09 release was really the point at which Mahout became a uh, 
a linear algebra platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First class linear algebra. And, you know, we were, I, for one, anyhow, was looking for something like MLib to eventually um, become, you know, become that. Yeah. Evolve into that. Because that's kind of how it started with algorithms and became a platform. And Spark stayed with algorithms and never really got to be a general purpose platform. Um, and then Andrew, a Andy Palumbo came in about that time after, after well, about nine, was it? Yeah. Yeah, nine and, and ten. And he and Dimitri did the whole Samsara. Right. And Dimitri, um, Dimitri and Sebastian sort of started the, the Spark. Uh, work and Dimitri, I think, had most of the operators and things working mm -hmm. by nine, and uh, and that just got polished up mm -hmm. more with uh, subsequent ones. And I, I'm even impressed with how many, how, how much of that is is in the code base. It's great. Anyway, I'll stop talking because I my battery's out. I'm gonna go get a power cord. Are we are we in host chat still, or do we have uh, do we have people in here, Chris? Chris is here. I don't know. I think we're creating artifacts for later. Okay. Well. Cool. And and part of this, like I said, having stories of like Mahood of yesteryear uh, was also part of what I was hoping to get. Yeah. On all this too, I had to give an abstract, and I was kind of poking fun at myself for some of my abstracts earlier and my bios. Mm -hmm. I think like my Kuplo one was like a one-liner of Kuplo is a exciting and fashionable new word, <laughs> and we'll talk about how to use it with Mahood. And, and Chris, Trevor Grant. Chris, someday he'll be chief mug lug. Not today, not someday. Hey, Chris, if you want to jump in, I, I think you're welcome. To, you're welcome to join. We have some slides, um, and we can we can go over those. I think um, you know it's kind of wordy as far as slides go. But if you wanted to run through the slides, we could do that. It's just sort of like a how-to on how to get involved, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, my too. In fact, it's been a long day. I'm, I, I was going to wait till the uh, whiskey tasting later, but I'm going to go see what I got in the fridge. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> Pat, are you out in uh, Winthrop now? Where are you at? Or no, you said um, on the islands? Yeah. Cool. I'm in right there at the, uh, on the wood, woodby side of the ferry. Oh, very nice. Okay. Not today. Right. You moved out of Bainbridge? We're in West Seattle. Oh, yeah. That's where we moved from. Yeah. Oh, really? West Seattle. Yeah. yeah. yeah Except there's no, there's no uh, bridge anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah, my, my space here, I can see the bridge, and there's definitely no traffic on it. So now we're joking about how it's the accidental island. Exactly. exactly. It always felt like an island living there. So That's right. Yeah. Are we started yet? No, I think we, we're half I over. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah well, I, I can talk about how I got to be a committer. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'd done some uh, machine learning work in uh, a couple different startups, and got interested in what was happening in the how. Um, because of the scalability issue, the startups um, at the time were doing kind of web scale things. And uh, so this was 2010 or so, um, meaning they had huge amounts of data. And the traditional ways of analyzing that were just at the time uh, way underpowered. Um, you know, databases and um, long SQL scripts and things uh, or uh, R in memory, that, that was even early for R. But a lot of these tools just pooped out when you got a lot of data and you couldn't do that in a production way. So got really interested in MapReduce when it started to come out. Um, and uh, one of the, I did a lot of stuff with uh, using um, how in text analysis in these startups, one was, uh, uh, and analyzing um, basically a social bookmarking type situation. We're analyzing text in uh, pages and uh, 
And it turned out we were kind of doing a recommender, content-based recommender. And then uh, we're using Mahout for that. And then uh, using things like clustering and uh, similarity, text similarity metrics. Um, and then got interested in um, uh, recommenders. Uh, I gave a little bit of this in the talk. Um, did This was when I was using Mahout uh, at a recommender as a service company. And we ran into this limitation uh, where with a recommender, you, you basically only use conversions. Almost all the recommenders out there, even today, you only have conversions. So if you don't, in an e-com sense, if you don't buy, mm -hmm. you don't have any data for a person, so you can't do anything personalized. But mm -hmm. we have all this other data, like pages they looked at and so forth. Anyway, um, after talking with people uh, in Mahout about how to solve this with Mahout, the answer was you can't. Um, and Ted had uh, the kernel of the algorithm to do this. And um, so I went and hacked a version of Mahout that would do this, just a hack. And that got put into uh, as a contributor. And I got put into examples as the solar recommender. It was oh, cool. Yeah. It was kind of an early version of that. And then Right about that time is when we're, this transition we were talking about into Spark. And that, I was keen on that. Uh, Spark was, you know, clearly the future of this kind of work, at least for a long time. And uh, so I got involved in that. And uh, Sebastian actually hacked this, the algorithm together in a, I don't know, it must have been just a few days. It was a basic scaffolding for um, the little bit of math that we use because he was there wasn't a lot of documentation at that time on uh, all the things that you went through Andrew in your talk mm -hmm. so there wasn't uh, the distal wasn't real well documented mm -hmm. um, it, which it is now um, anyway so uh, I took that and I was I became a committer about that time um, and so implemented some of that and some of the a few other tools around mm -hmm. that. But I think the the way that you get to be a committer is you're interested in mm -hmm. in the things that you can do, and you're interested in using the project if it's a, an existing project like that. And you naturally sort of get drawn into the place that you're most interested in. And that's about all it takes is show show that you're you know committed mm -hmm. if you're going to be a committer, mm -hmm. and that you have some. Uh, expertise. And even at that, you know, shoot, I'd been a manager for a long time, hadn't done any coding. I remember uh, Andy and Dimitri uh, critiquing my comments and things and, <laughs> you know, and, you know, helping me get better at that kind of stuff. So I definitely needed to be mentored as far as a coder. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, even though I'm a, an old fart, um, you still need to be you know, upgrade your talent, your your skills. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why joining a project like that, like Mahout, can be really a great thing for even, you know, younger programmers. Um, because you get mentored by some more experienced people just naturally. Uh -huh. um, and I think Mahout is one of the uh, most congenial uh, groups I've ever been involved with in open source. Uh, that's what they always say about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, both of you guys are great, and you know, Andy's great, and all the other contributors are great. Yeah. I mean, um, everybody's pretty generous. So, anyway, that's my two cents worth. Yeah, get that's a good one. If, you're, if you're interested. Yeah, Trevor, you want to tell your story? Oh, okay. You cut me off, but all right. Oh, fair enough. What were you gonna say? Next. Oh, I can go. You should do. <laughs> I don't care. I can go. Uh, I I was uh, similar to, to Pat. I was building a recommender for a streaming music company and doing everything from scratch and doing everything the wrong way and learning on, along the way, which I think everybody does. Um, like even to the the depths of uh, starting in Mathematica and uh, you know building things and doing a JDBC connection from Mathematica to Teradata and doing really silly things. And bringing Teradata down with uh, Cartesian joins and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, emails like, can you please stop doing that? Um, and I presented some some work that I had done uh, to, you know, some kind of exec group and 
somebody said, well, have you heard of Mahout? And I said, no, I haven't. And so I got, kind of got flat footed because it's one of those meetings where somebody says, well, there's this vendor or this tool that does what you're talking about. And whether it's true or not, it was, it was interesting. Um, it was an interesting learning experience for me to realize that, you know, you can, you can look up all the, all the things you want, but you're, you might still miss something that's already happening. Um, and I actually didn't use it until later at another position where I was, uh, building something to do clustering of uh, banking customers based on their purchases. And I used the K-Means uh, job that was already in there. And maybe this was in the, the 09 build. Um, and I, I, I you know, got, got all the data prepped, ran the job on it. And then when I went to look at the clusters, I, I, I was mystified because I, I was like, well, <clears throat> I see that users are clustered and I see the actual user vectors in each clustered group, but there's no user ID. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, it did, it did what it said it was going to do, and it clustered the users, but it, it had dropped all the user IDs on the floor. Um, and so, of course, I had chosen to do it on a, uh, you know, tight deadline with a customer who was already kind of peeved about progress and, you know, uh, so, but I, I, when the person I was working with on the team said, well, why don't we forget this and let's, you know, just do something else. But I said, well, I mean, geez, there's an email address where you can ask for help. And so I asked for help and I think it might've been, I might've been Sunil uh, who said, oh yeah, that's a known bug. And so at the same time, I was frustrated because I had discovered a bug in a, in a released piece of software at the, at, and, and, and also found out that there, there were people who had already tried to figure out how to fix it. And I said, well, this is what I figured I would do to fix it. And that was, you know, run a really on the results to match them up with the original file and then catch and I said, that's what I was thinking about doing. It might have been Sebastian. He said, um, yeah, you could do that. And that's that's what, you know, that, that will work. But why don't we try to fix it? And so um, <clears throat> I got to work trying to fix it and got some mentoring from the team and was able to fix a bug. So um, I think, uh, and then helping with a release is a really good way to get yourself involved. So at that time, the release was uh, still pretty, pretty hairy. Um, and there were, you know, like, like you said, Pat, there was a lot of mentoring as far as, you know, you didn't put any license headers on your files. You don't know what you're doing about that. And, you know, it's, it's actually a really, it's a wake up call as far as, well, this is obviously how it has to happen. I don't, I don't know why I didn't think of that, but, um, it's, it's actually, it's a good growth experience to get, you know, informed. No, actually you need to do that. Yeah. That's kind of part of the Apache way, uh, is, uh, hygiene. Good code hygiene, if you right. will. Right. Uh, I kind of bristle at some of that myself, but it's only because I'm lazy. Uh, that's yeah. a, that's a, that's a good uh, example of how to get involved. I mean, it, um, on the other hand, you know, I think a lot of beginners are not. You know, I I know I wouldn't have been happy to get. Uh, put on something like the build test or something to the exclusion. I mean, if you want to do that kind of thing, man, did we ever need that? Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, any kind of involvement um, that you're interested in and, and motivated for, you'll get plenty of help. Like yeah. at, at the time, we didn't have anybody helping us with the build. Oh my God. And, yeah. and now we have a committer who's an expert and if nothing else, we'll, we'll certainly help people uh, do the right thing. You yeah, know. he's in the chat. Yeah. yeah, Chris is? Yeah. Yeah, he's done an awesome job of, of getting that wrangled together. Thank you, Chris. That's right. So we we actually, so here's an interesting point. We asked for help many different ways because we were all stuck <clears throat> on uh, unwinding that. I suck more than you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's it was hard. It's hard because we had a combination of ignorance and lack of time. And we asked for help on the builds alias, and we asked for help in uh, infra, and and you know we really were sort of out there 
left, left swinging in the wind. And uh, we had a board report where we were questioned why it's taken us, uh, you know, a number of months to get a, a release out. And my response was, that's a good point. Uh, here's what we've done to get help. And they, they actually reached out and, and asked somebody to step in and, and help us out with the bill. So that's another place where <clears throat> I think having a community around a software project that says, well, based on what we've seen over time, your your project needs some help. Here's here's and here's someone to help you. That was that's something that you know we we could have we could have really been at a dead end if we didn't have uh, you know if we didn't have the uh, that support. So so thanks to Chris, thanks to Justin. I think was the, who uh, who reached out. So yeah. Well, Justin did a lot of work on the uh, website too, didn't he? A different Justin, but yeah. Oh, sorry, other Justin. That's a she. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Justin, if you're out there. Uh, yeah, and um, so what else? I think, uh, yeah, Chris doesn't even know what Mahout does. He's just, he, he came in and did a bunch of f file maneuvers. <laughs> but it was like the right maneuver. So, uh, you know, the build, the build used to be a lot of really brittle uh, commands that we that release managers didn't know what was happening. And now all we have to do is uh, release plugin branch, release plugin prepare, release plugin uh, perform. And then- It was a lot of MacGyvering over yeah. 10 years. Of mm -hmm. People like, oh, well, this will be the one little thing we need to make it work this much better. And a lot of that stuff is now since, or had since been, you know, incorporated into an Apache build plugins because it was the same problem everyone had. Mm -hmm. But no one knew what was going on, and so we just kind of eh, a little more bailing wire over here, some bubble gum over there. Yeah, and yeah. we'll survive. We'll live to die on another release. Um, yeah, so cleaning all that out was really, really, really clutch. We really appreciate it. Yeah, this is the longest point release I've ever seen. So anyway, oh, yeah. moving on. <laughs> I gave uh, back plus one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, have, you, have we have we announced it? Is Released yet? I haven't done that yet. I I'll, I'll be doing that later today. Heard it here first. Um, but I'm not sure the announce uh, mailing list will approve it because last time they squawked about us not having the right kinds of download links. Well, I'm just saying. Best. Yeah. Are we going to hear your story, Trevor? Yeah. So ApacheCon 2016. I guess before that, I started getting involved with the Apache Flink community, and um. Slim Bell right. Patty, he started um, he started the meetups everywhere, I think, but he started one in Chicago and he made me a co chair of the meetup. And then we went out to um, Flink Forward in Berlin, and that was really fun. That was, I think, my first big Apache event. And I was trying to, I, I was doing the, I did a Flink talk on Zeppelin with Flink. Someone had done something, but they kind of did a drive by, and I updated it and gave a whole talk on this and that. and. So Neil was in there and I went out for beers with him afterwards and he was talking about how, you know, on Mahout, we really want to come up with some, like, you know, visualization where this math stuff, we, we don't know how to visualize, we're not sure how we're going to go about visualizing things, Scala and Java, that's not the sweet spot. And I'm like, just use Zeppelin and hand it over the, the, that Z put stuff you were talking about. It, it's, it's really, really nice. You can do that now. It used to be some really old. It was like just deep magic that was kind of <laughs> written to back up some stuff in the Spark interpreters. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no reason you can't handle it from. It's just a block of memory. Um, no, there's no reason not to be able to handle it, hand it from a Spark Mahout interpreter to a Python interpreter to an R interpreter and just shuffling things around like that. Um, and then y'all made me a committer. I was, I remember working on like uh, setting up like Apache servers and like, high school and thinking like, oh man, these are so cool. All these Apache people who do all this stuff. I'll never be cool like that. Um, so I had, I had the entire, like conceptually being a committer or even PMC was just so high on a pedestal for me. I had like never could be me. Um, so that was really, really exciting. And now you know what it's really like. Yes. <laughs> no, I was, I was the same way. Explaining to my, to my wife, like how, how exciting it is. It's, it's one of those funny things. Like, no, you don't understand. I, I just met, you know, I just met a, 
you know, a famous person or something like that. But, yeah. yeah. But only in our own little nerdy communities. Sorry. Yeah. That's right. I know Ted Dunning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sorry, Ted. It's actually an honor to know you. I don't know <laughs> joke about it. I haven't seen him around this Apache uh, Apache Con. I wonder if he's here. Was it listed? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but then, yeah, getting to see the same people at uh, the different um, the, at the Apache Cons. That's another value to this you know you kind of make friends and then having a project that's a part of a larger umbrella project and, and seeing the same people across multiple you know events and getting to know the same people and being able to call on people from other projects or you know it's it's also very very nice yeah yeah it's not it's you know a lot of times you have a job and it's very narrow mm -hmm. you know you you have to uh, perform on deadlines and you're, you're working on fixing bugs or something. And this gives you a chance to do what you like. I mean, yeah, pick a project that you're interested in and do what you like. And you, of course you're working on your own time a lot of times, but there are, there are a lot of companies that will sponsor you to some extent. Right. Everyone yeah. <laughs> mine does a little bit. I missed the one last sentence. It, it went respond to what? Uh, nothing. Just chit chat. No, say it. I, I was <laughs> that uh, companies will sponsor sometimes uh, a certain amount of your time being devoted to working on an Apache project. The other yeah, thing, <clears throat> the other thing is the um, having that on your resume is a pretty cool thing yes. uh, because it's a known uh, level of uh, standard of quality that is above a lot of what, uh, what companies do. So, you know, if you're a committer to a project, it's uh, somewhat, uh, it's, it's worth putting on your CV. Yeah, that's, yeah, I that's, for that. is that right? Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, were, they were doing a big open source push and they couldn't, uh, did I say the company? It was some three letter, some three yeah, letter yeah. Uh, name. They, they were doing a big open source push and they couldn't uh, bring their regular committers out on sales calls. So they had a very clever idea just to hire committers that they could bring on sales calls. Um, and that was, hmm. uh, and, that, and that's what that's, I that's not the only company who's done that. Exactly. Like, um, and, and, you know, they, they, I call them my patron. Uh, yeah. They patroned that whole Mahout Roadshow mm -hmm. all of 16. We went to like 10 different cities, given uh, the meetups. I was in Seattle for a little while. Yeah, I was, at, I was at that time. Yep. You were doing eigenfaces or something, right? Yeah, that was right. That was the eigenfaces one. Yeah. Got a lot of mileage out of that talk. It's when I learned that you don't have to write a brand new talk for every time you give it. It's <laughs> That's right. <laughs> every couple times. Yeah. Um, and we should put that all oh, in that Docker container, too. Because the eigenfaces yeah, yeah. thing, that was straight. Uh, that was straight Zeppelin. That'd be yep. a nice little notebook to throw in there too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, having a company to patronize uh, your open source activities is definitely yeah. nice. Yeah, I, I uh, and I, I started uh, an effort at one job, which was a huge consulting company that um, you know they had some pockets of people who had either released an open source tool or something like that. But we. Uh, uh, started a program where we were, you know, building small pods of people who were interested in becoming involved in open source projects, and then trying to make a, a structure where they, you know, there could be like a, a coherent communication between that team and the the, the project team. Um, and it's it actually helps with some of those communications because what you can do with that is um, you don't have to have all committers working on something, but you could say. Like in the case where I had discovered a bug on a customer project, I can say, oh, that's a bug. I, I don't have time to fix this, but some somebody here does. And they, you know, as a committer to this project, I can say, here's how we're going to do it. You're going to spend some of your working time on this. Here's how you write it. Here's where to start and start mentoring that way inside the company. I, that That's, um, you know, that's what people are calling inner source. I think a lot too. Isabel's doing a lot about that stuff too. Um, 
but that's that's a nice yeah, that's, that's a, a that's a good point by the way the the inner source movement and the um and also working from home i mean all pro apache projects work like that mm -hmm. it's kind of um, moving to a remote work kind of situation was so non a non-issue for most of us that have you know worked yeah. inside of apache projects i mean things like this are an everyday occurrence mm -hmm. every friday for my house right yeah yeah every friday 10 o'clock pacific time and if you're central you can do it on your lunch hour that's right are we going to give out before we end here are we going to talk about what we need most i know i'm not running this agenda but if uh if i were a committer or thinking about committing my yeah. we can i'm going to expand a lot more on the next one too okay but 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 yeah i mean like Let's, let, this is a good time. Like we're all PMC. So what's your opinion of the things we need most? Because I'm doing a whole talk on what I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> speak now for everyone to peace. And also this is, this is the month that uh, we, I'm moving on and I've nominated someone else to be uh, chair of this project. So it's very exciting. Who, who, who would that be? It's me. You guys are all pointing in different directions. So. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I am on your screen. Yeah. His initials are TG, so I, it's not official until the board ratifies it. But that's that's very exciting news. So, thank you, Trevor, for agreeing to do that. And um, now it, we're going to run Thanks, things a little hey, different. Thank you here. for doing it the last uh, couple of years. Yeah. My pleasure. This uh, yeah, when, once they find that you've been doing some small talk programming, you'll probably be disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So yeah. Uh, well, I mean, what the the big bullet points that we were thinking about uh, on the list were Python bindings. That's something we've been talking about forever, and we've sort of been waiting for a build process that doesn't you know take everyone uh, so long to to get things going. But that's 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 a big one for me. You say Python bindings. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I've heard that's a um, bigger mess, but oh, one uh, thing that um, uh, I've always I don't know, griped about, but haven't had the time to put into it is something like data frames. It's the one thing yeah. missing from our, our uh, bindings. Um, yeah. One of the problems that you, you were talking about, uh, Andrew, in your talk was uh, remembering the row IDs or something, you know, user, yeah. user IDs. <clears throat> well, there's, there's nothing in there for column IDs and what happens when you do you know, math, those things should just follow it around for the most part where possible. Um, so I, I thought about getting back in and doing some of that, but they're, I don't know, Kubernetes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll help you do the Kubernetes if you can, uh, <laughs> my user data frames. How about that? Oh, uh, we should definitely talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So that's my one little thing. Something like Arrow, maybe for trend, for taking data from one system to another. Yes. Uh, sorry. Something like Arrow for translating data from one oh. system to another. I think that's that's something that would be interesting too. Yeah, that's been talked about uh, several times, but mm -hmm. now that was actually before Arrow. So. Yeah. Aren't we working right. on that to some extent? Nobody's so doing that right now. Just Before talk. Years, it's, it's all been, we got to push a new release out. So we finally yeah. got it out the door. And now we've got a wide open field to actually start building features again, which I think will be a really exciting time. But that's why, again, can't thank you enough, Chris, for helping us get over that hump that we can never get over. Because it's hard to keep people motivated when you're just trying to slog through and get a release push out. There's no new features. There's no new cool stuff. Yeah, it's been a bit of a drag. Release. Yeah. So. And the, all of those changes that we went through ended up creating a lot of technical debt in the build, and I think Chris kind of swept that away. So yeah, we should rename this talk to "Thank You, Chris." <laughs> <laughs> well, we I mean we have we have some slides here too. I think it's going to be fine for people to read through, but you know, it's like, there's stuff that's like basically a step-by-step -step how to be a committer. Mm -hmm. 
So all that stuff's and in the slides. Learning fake criticism. Yeah. These slides suck. I know. Uh, <laughs> well, and you got the top of it too, and um, you were saying you go to conferences and stuff, mm -hmm. and you're kind of we're kind of losing some of that here, but I think that's like really really important. And I don't know how Apache way it is, but like these uh, projects, especially when you get away from like the really really super big mega projects, and even them to some degree too, they're like clubs, and so you want to. You want to be on a project with people you'd be okay hanging out with because that's kind of what this is mm -hmm. um and so you go and you meet people and it's it's nice seeing someone in real life it's not the only way but i think it's a big um a big well even if you you do the same thing in a slack you know it's sure it's quite congenial and um you know you talk about other things than just just yeah. the project and it is kind of like a club yeah but yeah it is nice to meet people in person uh -huh. Maybe 2021 or two. <laughs> yeah. Someday the vaccine will come. Yeah. Because I don't trust you guys. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Questions? We got, yeah. Any questions from anybody in the audience? I know we had a few people in there. Yeah, we had some good, good attendance. <laughs> Oh, you, it's like you asked for a volunteer. <laughs> That's the response you get for a volunteer. Everybody yeah. steps back one. That's right. <laughs> well, Chris says, uh, like it's on a big project, all you have to do to become a committer is submit about 100 PRs. <laughs> Not that many for us. I think mean, Chris, Chris might have submitted two. But they were big. That's true. And really, that's what it is, you know, like, a hundred, a hundred, you know what? A hundred documentation typo fixes. I would consider a committer on that, but like sure. one or two, yeah, like a big, either a major bug fix or, you know, working with someone on becoming a committer or, I mean, on a feature ad, those are, um, he says with Maven even more, <laughs> um, those are, those are totally valid. Um, and so, yeah, and it goes back to what Pat was saying, you gotta find something you're just passionate about and you actually care about um or and i would say the other way is something you are really an expert in you're like oh here's a really easy way uh, which is, chris is like i know a lot about builds and yeah. just did the build and he's or fast he utils mm -hmm. That's a, a, fast utils was a um somebody who was an expert in in memory you know hash maps and things and came in and really sped up now so yeah, that's um like, and 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 Chris jokes that he doesn't even understand what Mahout does, but he, he made committer because he was. But he makes it work. Thing that we needed, yeah. Yeah. So and that's okay. And I think I'm afraid that's what it, like scares a lot of people off. They're like, I don't understand distributed linear algebra. I couldn't be a committer for that. You can. You can uh -huh. be a committer. Just help them fix the docs. Uh -huh. Um. That's. Yep. Yeah. Chris says in uh, PLC for X, they have committers with only one or two patches. I would agree. It's like, that's more than one or two like document typo fixes, but yes, mm -hmm. a couple a couple legit patches for sure. I put them on the path committer or I would elect to add them. So don't be afraid. If you want to be a committer, no. come on down. It's an easy, it's an easy fix. It's, it's, uh, it makes it easier for you to get to contribute and, uh, yeah, it's not a big commitment either. It's just uh, if if you want to if you want to do the work, you can you can do it you can do it easier and sort of have a have a merit badge. <laughs> yep. Cool. Well, I think that's about time for us. So, um, if y'all want, I guess come and see the next talk. I'm gonna take a quick little break before I jump over. So you've got a couple minutes. Um, I'll probably start at maybe at, it's, it's, we've got a 35 on my time zone. So at yep. 40, I'll probably start. Okay. So I remember and I have 20 there. minutes before I have to do another meeting, but I will be over there. That's fine. I'm going to try to, I'll, I'll try to front load the good stuff. Awesome. Thanks guys. Good to see you. Good seeing you guys. You too. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.